Hi, Herbert. Hello, and uh, welcome to part two of this video on Bioshock and Zizek. Obviously, there will be spoilers ahead for Bioshock, and uh, other than that, I'm just going to jump right in. Point three, the use of form. Bioshock, like many video games, opens with a cutscene where we cannot control our character. This is significant, as we later discover that, beyond our control, just like Ryan's murder, Jack is forced to crash the plane, demonstrating how Bioshock employs the medium's familiar tropes to emphasise this manifesto. We have no choice. When we first assume control of Jack, we are stranded at sea, surrounded by the ocean, which we won't leave throughout, with only one available path, swimming to the lighthouse. Handing control to the player therefore highlights their lack of control when wrestling it away from them, efficiently combining narrative and form in a manner impossible in other media. Shortly after, we submerge ourselves in the setting through descending into rapture, indicative of inescapably immersing ourselves within the game and accentuating our connection to Jack. Like him, we cannot escape until we fulfil the agenda of the unseen forces controlling us. We could leave the game, but for Zizek's beliefs on consumerism, in which Bradshaw finds a superego that tells us to do more. Should we neglect Bioshock, we must consume something else. Furthermore, that neglect cannot kill Jack, nor end the story, as no time passes in the fictional world. Jack is revived upon death, which Bioshock addresses through Vita Chambers, diegetic resurrection tools that enforce conformity with the game's objectives. Once you begin, you cannot escape through leaving, restarting, or even death. Bioshock must be completed, or it forever continues. Complete its demands, or fail. Simply through existing, its ideology has won. Point 4. Altazer and Art Of course, to discuss escaping video games, in which Shaw writes escapism is key to the experience of media consumption, is intrinsically ironic, but does distraction from your own reality, itself based in ideology, truly allow any escape? Perhaps Bioshock's commercial purposes, alongside its creator's philosophies, override escapism with a further ideology. If so, even the most mindless, escapist self still exists within said ideology, reinforcing the theme of enslavement. Here, however, Zizek's statement proves problematic. Althusser writes, I do not rank real art among the ideologies, and that art examines the ideology from which it is born, in which it bathes, and from which it detaches itself. Through this internal distanciation, Althusser concludes that art can escape ideology, reflecting upon itself and its creation. Zizek's ideas dispute this, stating that art which intends the Althusserian escape falls into the Zizekian trap of proving its own enslavement. Moreover, Zizek equates the Lacanian thesis on dreams and his own ideas on ideology, thus likening language and ideology, which is also problematic. Because if, as Zizek interprets Lacan, language truly serves as an ideological state apparatus infecting us on every level in the mirror stage, internal distanciation would be impossible for art based in language. Yet in defining the concept, Althusser cites Balzac and Solzhenitsyn, suggesting language-based texts, such as, in this instance, scripted video games, can achieve what Zizek believes unachievable, and that those texts, especially when evaluating their own ideology, can escape. Though we cannot simply answer whether art is true escapism, it is difficult to dismiss Althusser's assessment altogether with Zizek's generalizing assertion. Perhaps art can successfully depict the ideology from which it has emerged, and perhaps it can do so from beyond. In summary, Zizek's statement certainly corroborates Bioshock's commentaries, whilst also furthering its themes into a broader ideological focus and the enslaving element of the very desire to break free. Meanwhile, whether through the illusion of choice, presenting Rapture as a failed attempt to escape ideology, seizing control from the player, or our own inability to escape the game, Bioshock successfully manipulates the medium and the player's role to expand Zizek's hypothesis. There should undoubtedly be questions of whether video games somewhat reject the idea through their escapist nature, but Zizek's statement clearly merits cautious application to the wider concepts of enslavement and ideology, both separately and as one. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate that that was probably a bit of a slog. You can award yourself 10 lazy words for making it to the end. Unless of course you don't stick around, because I still have to thank Lumen for letting me use their music in this video. So. Thanks. And if you like this video, please do give it a like, or feel free to leave a comment if there's anything you wanted to say. Alright. I'll see you next time.